Coming up on this episode of the Tesla Model 3 Owners Club Show. Model 3 updates and lots of news and some cool pictures. Tesla expansion in Asia. Ontario charging news. And we'll get to the viewer mailbag to answer some questions. Good. Stay tuned. Well, thanks for joining us on the show. My name is Trevor Page, my co-host. Kenneth Pokor, welcome. Great, thanks for watching. So we got lots of news this week, Ken. We do, we got lots of stuff coming up. It's been a busy, what, four weeks, I think, since our last show. Yeah, and we did one last week. First of all, I want to say thanks for everybody for watching our incredible interview with uh, John Dixon and his Model X last week. Uh, we got a lot of good response on that. So you can look forward to uh, some more shows in the future with some more interviews. I think uh, going on location seems to work quite well. It's lots of fun, too. Lots of fun. Boy, ludicrous mode is ludicrous. Yeah. Have, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> if you watch the videos, uh, they, as you said, it doesn't do justice to actually experiencing ludicrous mode. Mm -hmm. So if you have an opportunity to go on a ride with somebody that has ludicrous mode, take it. That's all I have to say about that. It's a great thing. <laughs> well, let's get right to the news. There's lots of news that we want to talk about. And we've got lots of pictures that we're going to show you as well during the show. Uh, and I think one of the biggest news that have come up over the last week, specific to the Model 3, is the trunk. About Elon uh, talking that uh, there's been some tweeting and people complaining about the size of the trunk. I know when I first looked at it, it seemed a little different as far as the design. But I thought, well, there's still enough room to get stuff in there. Uh, but apparently he's saying they're going to redesign it. What, what have you heard? Well, at the reveal event uh, back uh, in uh, late March, um, when they were doing the test drive events, there were some pictures taken of, of the Model 3. Um, and one of them showed the trunk um, open. And because of the fixed glass situation in the back, and, the, and honestly, the picture was taken from a very bad angle, so mm -hmm. everybody got the impression that it was actually a small opening. Right. Um, and, of course, a few days later, T, uh, Elon went took to Twitter to yep. ask for feedback and so on and so forth. Yep. Um, and everybody was complaining about the, the, the potential opening on the back of the Model 3 being small. Yep. And, he, you know, he tweeted out that they were going to look into tweaking the opening. And right. he's since confirmed that they've done that. Right, because he said, I think, uh, just sh slightly after that, that you could fit a surfboard in there or something like that. Well, he mentioned Somebody that, asked, yeah, he right? mentioned that at the, at the at the at the event. At the and event, I don't think, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think everybody really knows, but the, the, the back seats on the Model 3 do fold, fold down. down. So, 60-40, I think, something yes, like that. Yes, I have a picture mm -hmm. buried somewhere in my archives yep. that shows a 60-40 split. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we're showing a picture here that was, uh, there's a lot of pictures that have surfaced over the last couple of weeks, different quote-unquote spy shots, I guess, and, and the... Uh, the Model 3s that have been out and about, uh, the prototypes that are out. And this one, I guess, is in one of the Tesla service centers. And you can see that the trunk's open. So you get a good idea of the hinge mechanism and the size of the trunk from that. And if we go to the next picture, it's actually a video that somebody took of the rear trunk. And, uh, uh, you know, it's a slow-mo video. And if you watch this video, they've really gone into some detail about how the hinge mechanism is. And what's your thoughts on, on the, uh, the design I think it's of this? quite interesting. Um, everything about car design is always a compromise. You yes. can't... You can't um, you, you can't please everybody all, all the time. And I think Tesla's <laughs> design engineers and their designers made a conscious decision with the Model 3. Um, anecdotally, the car is about 90% the size of a Model S. But right. when you shrink a car down, you can't shrink the passengers too. So you start impeding on the interior space. Right. Exactly. So it's pretty obvious at this point that Tesla made a decision that they wanted to keep, especially the rear seat. If you've ever sat in the rear seat of a Model S, you'll yep. know that headspace, you know, headroom is is a bit of an issue so mm -hmm. with the model 3 being a little bit smaller car that the interior space was at a premium right so what they decided to do was not only to move the dash forward so that or make the dash smaller and move it forward so that you could get more space in the front and give more leg room in the back mm -hmm. but they opted for an all glass uh, rear um, roof instead right. of being uh, you know where the roof or the the uh, the cross pillar comes right about here yes. they've moved it far about about that far forward and we do have some pictures coming up about the roof yeah. as well and mm -hmm. so by doing that it affords a lot more headroom in the rear of the vehicle but obviously they've also right. made a decision here that they couldn't do a complete lift back of the same size as the model s mm -hmm. um, because it would move the hinge point too far forward so as a compromise right 
instead of the usual sedan where they have a small trunk opening that flips up like this, that they just move the hinge line further up on the C-pillar. Yeah. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, cars, uh, the pillars that hold up the roof are labeled A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. Um, so on the C pillar, which is the rear one, they moved the hinge point. You can see that in the video mm -hmm. further up. So what that does is that affords the, the lift back trunk area mm -hmm. that would normally find on a smaller sedan, say a, a Mazda 3 or BMW yeah. 3 series, yeah. uh, to be a larger opening on the Model uh, 3. So, and exactly. of course, that affords them a, lar a little bit larger opening space in the back. Now, of course, some people were complaining that they thought it was still, still too small. And apparently Elon and his design team have, have tweaked it. So remains to be seen, but um, we'll have to I see think it. it'll work out. And we've got this illustration as well for you that shows, I guess, the different locations of, of where a trunk uh, hinge mechanism could be, whether it's a small type of opening for a trunk or something that gives you poor headroom, as you're saying, if it's a bigger hatch or something that's a smaller hatch that kind of fits right for the headroom, but might uh, you know restrict rear visibility. So yeah. some different illustrations to actually show um, the challenges that they have. So I guess the, the, the takeaway from this is that they are going to change the trunk somehow. They're going to make it bigger somehow, and we'll wait to see how that design fleshes out. But in your opinion, they're, going to, they're basically just going to move that hinge mechanism somewhere else uh, and maybe no, have no. part of the glass lifting up. Uh, no, I think the hinge is staying where it is. The yeah. glass is where it is. It's the physical opening in the back. They've okay. probably been able to move it up a little bit, uh, maybe a little and bit wider. Way. Yeah. So you, you mentioned, Trevor, about the roof picks, uh, the, the panoramic roof uh, option that's there. And we have some pictures that we're showing as well that should be behind us. Uh, really showing uh, the true nature of that roof and all the glass that's out there and in it of course you can see how it compares to a normal car's roof um, which is all solid or might have a sunroof or some some other vehicles that say they have panoramic but they might be a little smaller yeah. versions of this but it, it's quite enlightening as far as the visibility that you're going to get from this. Yeah, I think that's pretty. Uh, it's pretty clear that uh, Tesla has a pretty big hit with the large panoramic roof on the Model X. Mm -hmm. In this case, they've actually reversed it. It's actually really on the rear, but they have uh, moved the the first cross member that's normally found on the Model S uh, in about this area, and they've actually moved it back. It appears to be maybe about six to eight inches, yep. and then moved the rear cross brace quite a bit forward. So at the end of the day, um, the Tesla has confirmed that they will have a uh, a roof section in the middle mm -hmm. that's metal. Yeah. Uh, an option that's all glass and an option that'll be panoramic, which is, you know, your traditional moonroof that can open and close. Cool. So by doing that, it just, it, it helps with um, uh, the perception of more interior space by letting more sunlight in. So Absolutely. we'll see how it works out. So it should be fun to see. I'm and, getting all uh, glass. I don't know about you. But. Uh, yeah, well, I'm, <laughs> I've got to wait and see what the UV rating is, to be honest with you. I've got to understand how that's going to work, um, because I'm sure if they cut down the UV, it'll it'll keep heat well, from coming I in. On right? that on that, um, on that that note, Tesla has confirmed that everything that they've learned about the UV protection in the Model X mm -hmm. is going into the Model 3 as well. So I don't think okay. it's going to be that much of an issue. Yeah. For those of you who really have an issue, uh, Tesla has been putting out and giving... Model X owners a free, uh, free uh, like collapsible sunshade that you oh, can okay. put in. Okay. So I'm I would suspect that it will probably nice. offer something like this to the Model Three owners if if they wish yeah. as an option. And here we have a good shot. I think of a, one of the Model Threes uh, going down the road that actually shows that first section of the panoramic room roof. And a, as you're saying, it's different than the X, where the X kind of actually comes up to that initial line and. Or, or almost to there, and then you have your sun visor. So this really is a, is a big sense yeah, of... Yeah, I found this picture floating there. around the internet, and I yeah. thought I'd, we'd put it up here in the show, and it really, I think it really gives you a good sense of mm -hmm. of the openness inside not the cabin. not us in the car, by the no, way. No, no, no. We I wish, wish it was. We wish. Hey, Tesla, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> exactly. But you're right, it gives that sense of openness, right? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Looking forward to that. Interesting to see that. Um, again, so that prototypes have been around, and there's a lot of them flying, a lot of pictures that are flying around. So more of these uh, pictures of the prototype picks at the shop. And this one was interesting because there was an article that focused more about the interior of the. So you kind of get a little bit more of a, of a static interior shot. Uh, people have zoomed in on this and, and talked about it. Uh, but what are your thoughts? This basically looks like what we saw at the reveal. Uh, yes, this is the uh, matte black mm -hmm. uh, interior. Um, uh, sorry, the interior of the matte black, black prototype that they had there. Yep. Um, the, the one thing that everybody needs to remember about these before you go all hating on this and putting all kinds of comments in, Tesla has a long history of showing prototypes with placeholder interiors. They're not final. Right. They, if, if anything changes the most on, on Tesla vehicles, it's always the interior. Now, having said that with Model 3, and I think we've made this point before, mm -hmm. is that because of the time frame involved getting this car into production, we may not see as many changes to the interior. But Tesla right. has said that they are going to tweak the interior um, there's some talk about a heads-up display, potentially. I think they're probably going to go to more of an augmented reality. Mm -hmm. um, the center screen, Tesla engineers have said that it is staying. It's mm -hmm. going to be horizontal. 
Uh, because of the fact that they push the dash so far forward, that it really precludes the 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 screen from being embedded into into yep. the dash like a lot of people really want. Yep. But it has to be on some kind of pedestal to bring it back forward. We'll see at the end of the day. Like I said, please take these pictures with a grain of salt. The, mm -hmm. Even the steering wheel is not final. That's and That's Elon's true. confirmed the steering yeah. wheel and the controls of the car are not final. Right. So don't hate. <laughs> yeah. Just give them time. Let's wait things will work out. I think it'll be really nice. Exactly. Well, it's it's interesting. Somebody had posted, uh, I think, on Electric um, the site. Uh, they talked about a comment when they zoomed in that they noticed that the interface on that 15-inch display looks like they're using the, the current Model S's uh, car emulation. Uh, this is the first time we see more of this interface in landscape for the Model 3. So it's interesting that we're seeing something different than just the maps that we've kind of seen from the test drive, from the reveal, and some of the other photos. Yeah, at the reveal event, one of the engineers said that the interface was nowhere near as finished. Right. They've got a lot of work to do on that. Um, you know, the screen being in a horizontal mm -hmm. uh, configuration affords them uh, the, the ability to rethink the interface. Right. Right. So I think we're going to see some interesting things, especially the fact that we don't have an instrument panel anymore in right. front. Mm -hmm. So by moving some of that data over to the center instrument panel, it gives them different opportunities to think about the user mm -hmm. interface. Or like I said, if they do some kind of HUD or whatever, then right. they can move it you know, kind of in front of the driver or the passenger mm -hmm. or something. So and again, just some more pictures of that uh, matte black uh, prototype that's been running around just to get a good idea. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the matte black, but I know a lot of people like it. That paint finish is uh, reportedly a pain in the butt. It's not uh, the, the paint yeah. that's actually flat, it's the clear coat. Exactly. Um, BMW has a paint finish called Frozen that you can mm -hmm. get as an option. Mm -hmm. It's a little more finicky to take care of because you can't rub it yep. because it'll go shiny and then you've ruined the, you know, the finish on the car. Exactly. So yeah. uh, Elon has said that it was a popular color that people were looking at. They may be looking at offering it as an option, okay. but don't count on it. it. It is a little more finicky to take care of. So yeah. And then there's some more pics uh, coming up uh, as well with that prototype. Uh, they have, I don't know if it's the same one. Yeah, it is. Uh, it looks like the same one. Yeah. So it's at the headquarters. Um, and these are, where, I guess, where people are getting tours of the headquarters and they're seeing this thing out in the foyer or out in... Yeah, Tesla doesn't seem to be quite shy about showing this prototype. Yeah, exactly. These two prototypes, the silver and the black one. I love the light. So if you're looking at these pictures that we've put up, I really love the the LED. I was, I was able to confirm, so. and I've shown it in one of my earlier videos, mm -hmm. that the LED lights on the prototypes, at least, are adaptive. So so oh, okay. there will be an option potentially to have adaptive headlights like you can get an option with the premium pack on the Model S and the Model right. X. Nice. The people are videoing and picturing, taking pictures of the Model 3s when they're in the wild on the roads. Uh, and here we have some pictures of that somebody snapped of one driving along one of the freeways um, down in California, I guess. And then a video, of course, of that, um, of that, of that running. Uh, from that perspective, um, it's a minute or a couple of minute long video and he catches up to the car and then he kind of passes it in videos as it goes by. But it gives you, again, a good sense of how the car looks, how the, how the stance is on the road. Uh, and then, of course, Tesla put out their official high-res photos, I think, from their from their promo photo shoot that we've all seen over the last couple of months. That silver one uh, looking over San Francisco Bay, if I have that correctly. That's right. The Golden Gate in the background. Mm -hmm. um, these are awesome pictures. I mean, I love I have I love them on my, uh, on my computer desktop. Uh, they're yeah. high-res images. I'll put a link in yeah. the uh, video uh, notes at the bottom where you can go and grab these images and put them on your own computer if you like. They're, they're wonderful. Exactly. Great uh, images to look at. I encourage everybody to have a look at these and, and download them if you want. Also, a couple of pictures of some of the uh, you know behind the scenes during the photo shoot with the, the rig truck and everything there. Sure. And the, the cops blocking the road and uh, making everything happen but it's a nice color in fact what stood out for me uh, was a couple of things one I think a fan photoshopped a white version of this which I, I'm, I drive a white car today I really like white uh, the color for the car um, keeps the heat down of course um, and uh, this really looked nice what were your thoughts on that um, I'm kind of partial to white cars oh, yeah. I have my <laughs> last two cars now. yes yeah my two cars are white yeah uh, to me I think the Tesla's I mean, it's not yeah. for everybody. Right. Um, I happen to like uh, white because with the contrast with, say, the dark windows and stuff, it really yeah. makes a car look like a space shuttle. It's very futuristic. However, I'll be honest, uh, the silver prototype is just... <laughs> well, the silver prototype is nice. Yeah, oh, actually. my God. We've it's got some beautiful. more pictures here that we're, we're looking at, and you can look at, uh, you know, as we put behind us, and then, of course, download them from the Internet and, and look at them. But just the people looking at it. And here's this a, shot right here. This is a nice shot where it's a zoomed-in shot. You've got some people standing behind it, but it really gives you a sense of the color because it's... It's not a bright sunny day. It looks to be a more of an overcast grayer day, but this thing really just shines. It really pops out. Yeah, I think Tesla ch uh, chose the silver color on purpose rather than say, 
uh, for a lot of these uh, beauty shots we've been seeing yeah. because yeah. silver lends itself quite well to showing you the lines of the vehicle with exactly. the, you know with the uh, with the shadow caster on the mm -hmm. bottom or the or the uh, the light catch